Hello, my name is Tom. Today I'll be working with my DL305 PLC made by Automation Direct. In today's video, I am going to establish a communications link between my laptop computer and my DirectLogix 305 PLC. Now I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and show you the materials for today's project. If you follow the hyperlinks that I have here for each item, it should take you directly to the Automation Direct website where each item is located. And I have a pre brief project description here along with the wiring schematic for a programming cable that I will be using today. And if I scroll down here a little bit further, I have the setting up of the D3-232-DCU which is a data communications unit that is used to establish a communications link between the PLC processor and a computer. And here I have the settings that I use for the communications unit. Now block 1 and block 2 are located on the right hand side here of the data communications unit. And let me show you that in the picture here. And here's block 1 and here's block 2. On block 1, what that does is it sets the communications protocol and the only dip switch that I have selected there is dip switch number 2 which starts from the bottom. Number 1 is at the bottom, then number 2 all the way up through to number 8 at the top. Number 2 is pushed to the left. All the rest are pushed to the right and the block number two here just below that is where the address is selected and the only dip switch that I have in the on position there which is to the left is switch number one so that gives me an address of one and all the rest are selected to the right now here up at the top here I have a online and offline switch that is in the up mode which selects the data communications unit to be online in the offline mode I can connect a handheld programmer which I have on the data communications unit in this picture here on the front that allows me to use the handheld programmer now, if I'm going to be using my computer, I need to be in the online mode, so that switch needs to be up. So at the bottom here, I have a plug here for an external power supply. Now this unit can be driven by an external power supply or the internal power supply. The switch for selecting which power supply you're using, whether if it's internal or external, is on the back side here. And for me, I use the internal, but you can also use the external by selecting the up position. But I leave it in the down position to select the uh, internal power supply. Now I need to go over a few things on the front here. And the first thing is, is this plug right here is where the handheld programmer is plugged into and the handheld programmer is secured through these two slits one at the bottom one at the top these two screws here is, are what secure the data communications unit to the PLC itself there are two holes two screw holes on the front of the DL305 base right where the power supply is that this unit secures to. Here is the programming cable that I'll be using today. And just above that is six LEDs. Now the first one here on the left that is on right now is the run LED and that tells me that the processor is in run and it is executing the program. Now just below that is a battery LED which is red if this is on that means that you need to change the battery on your processor and then just below that is a CPU LED that is also red 
and when that turns on, you need to check your processor because it's in fault. And then to the right here, I have a data LED, which is a green LED. And when that flashes, that means that it's either sending or receiving data through the data communications unit. And just below that is a diagnostics LED. Now, when the unit is first powered up, whether if it's a power cycle of the PLC or if you're just plugging it in, it will perform a self-diagnostics on the unit. Now, if it passes, the green LED will turn on. If it does not pass, it will not be on. So if it does not pass, what you can try is a lot of times the base on the PLC, the power supply, starts to weaken. And if that's the case and you're using the internal power supply, you can try powering everything down, making sure that your switch on the back is selected properly for the internal power supply reinstall it and pull out a few of your input and output cards to reduce the power budget on that power supply and maybe that will allow the diagnostics to come up and to illuminate that LED. If not you can always use an external power supply and if that doesn't work probably the unit itself is bad. And down just below that LED is a power LED. When the unit is powered up, that LED will be on, letting you know that the power source which is selected is supplying power to the unit. And that's about it for this unit. Uh, if I come to the step-by-step -step section, I can scroll through here real quick and show you briefly, because I'll be performing this in a few seconds here anyways, but you can pause it at any time. So I don't want to take too much time in this video. Okay, this shows that I've got a communications link here and I gave it a name and that's it for my step-by-step -step guide here. So I'll scroll back to the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the Drexel 5 software and I'm going to show you how to establish the link using the link wizard. So I'm going to come here to PLC, then connect, and the select link window opens up and as I can see there are no links for a 330 or a 305 PLC here. So I'm going to add a link here. Now I can either use the link editor or I can use the wizard itself. Here the wizard is asking me which COM port do I have my programming cable plugged into. And if you need to find which cable or which port you're connected to, you come here to control panel hardware and sounds, device manager, and that brings up the port section here. And you can see that I'm connected to COM port 2 with my cable. So I'll make sure that COM 2 is highlighted and press next. I'll use the link wizard to configure this for me. Now under PLC family I can either use this as not sure or select direct logic 305 and then select next. And the protocol I want to use is DirectNet and address 1, select next. And it scrolled through and I found a link for me. Now what I want to do is give it a name. And I don't want to name it uh, the same as another link that I already have. But since I don't have a link called 305, I will put that in there. And click finish. Now here I can either double click on the 305 link here, but since it's highlighted here I can also press select. So I'll press select. 
and it starts communicating. And it's reading the program within the PLC. And what it should do is come up with, as, as I was going to say, come up with a window stating that there are differences between the online and offline version. And here I can either use the PLC or I can use the disk. If I use the disk, whatever is up here now will be displayed. That will not be what's in the PLC, but that's what I will be displaying. If I want to download it to the PLC, I'll have to write the project. Or I could use the PLC, and if I use that, my documentation may not be right. Or I can come here to Details and view the differences. Now, here is what's in the PLC right now, which I can see I have a couple of timers and a couple of outputs. And here's what's on the disk which there is nothing there as you can see there's nothing here so I'm going to close this out and I'm going to use the PLC and I'm going to click status and show you that everything is working fine my timer here is timing now I should have a couple outputs come on and this timer starts timing then it'll time out and keep recycling So that's about it for this video. I can upload the program, I can download the program from here, I can monitor it, I can click the status off so that you can't see what's going on. Click the status on, you can see that there is power through here. And there's power through here, my outputs are on, my timer is on here. So that's about it for this video. If you like it, let me know.